Hello and welcome back. This is the Clay Golan. We're back in Foundry VTT and we are continuing building our fan delve and below the shattered obelisk. And if you recall, if you've not watched up till now, we have got as far as chapter four and we are filling out Wave Echo Cave. So in this video, we're just going to carry on updating all of the locations and we're basically following the published module here. Now, I've said a few times, I'm going to make this a bit lighter for while we're working on it. Yeah, daytime, there we go. Um, yeah, I've said I've got a few problems with this module, um, with bits of this module, and this is one of those areas, um, and we're going to kind of get to that. So uh, let me go to my, um, not my items, let me go to my journals, and I want my Fandelver journal, and I want my Wave Echo Cave one. So here we go, and this is where we've put things in, and we got as far as last time completing this area here, uh, the ruined storeroom. So we need to continue with our next area here, which is going to be down here. And this is the Fungi Cavern. Now, this is one of the areas that I have issues with. Um, let me just create this map location. Open this up. Uh, what area is this? Is area 9? No, area 8. Getting ahead of myself. So let me grab the uh, all the text and stuff from here first. And then I'll explain to you why I personally have a bit of a problem with this. Um, I suspect I'm not the only one, but I might be, and that's that's okay. <laughs> if it works for you, it works for you. Okay, right, the last bit we're going to drop in here. So, this talks about uh, two violet fungi. So, straight away we can uh, drag in our violet fungus and get rid of that. So, two violet, vunga, violet fungi <laughs> uh, lurk here. Uh, one in the middle of the central fungi patch, so this bit right here. Um, and one in the northern patch, so one up here. They're hard to notice with all the fungi around them. Each character can attempt an intelligence nature check. I'll update that in a second. Uh, to spot the violent fungi before moving within their reach, characters can safely avoid the fungi, blah, blah, blah. The green glowing fungi are harmless, but they allow creatures to see the entire cavern. This cave has hindered the spider's explorations. What? <laughs> what the hell? So this cavern, which has just basically got fungi in it. Um, so it says, well, let's read the description. Dense carpets of weird fungi cover large sections of the floor of this cavern. Uh, the growth includes puffballs. Um, a foot across, weird shell fungus, etc., etc. Some of them glow green with an eerie phosphorescence. Okay, there's two violet fungi in here. Now we've encountered violet fungi in Stormwreck Isle. Um, they're in there, so we've already got those monsters in. In fact, actually, we can go straight and drag those violet fungi in. One in the north patch up here, uh, and one of them in this central patch, and we want them to be hidden for now. So let's just open these up. These are CR one quarter creatures. Okay. So they're, they're not difficult. Not difficult. And especially when you consider that the players should be fourth level by the time they come here. A couple of violet fungi really are not a challenge. All right. So this cave has hindered the spider's exploration. He suspects that the mine's magic workshops are nearby, but he's reluctant to risk facing the dangerous monsters here. Two violet fungi. Are you kidding me? This this is a uh, for me this is a really big issue with this module. Everything that Nesnar has done, all of the goblins he's got and the doppelgangers, um, all these schemes and everything else, yet two violet fungi they just stop his plans dead that's nonsense isn't it so there is no way that that makes any sense um and we will need to do something about that but i'm going to stick with what they are saying here um but what should we do how should we make this chamber different um i'm gonna let me close that uh let me save and close that just dump this down here for us just so we've got it on there and let's zoom out the map a bit. So uh, if you're not familiar with this, where they're trying to get to is this, this room over here. This room over here is where the Forge of Spells is the ultimate goal of uh, the first four chapters. Now there's two things that stop Nesnar, who is based over on this side, from getting over on this side. 
as you can see there's two routes one of them is here through this fungus cavern well we've just had that little discussion that that really should not be something that stops him the other route is through this corridor here directly through this now this area is guarded we haven't got there yet but it's guarded by a flaming skull again really should not be a significant challenge to Nesnar with his powers and everything else there is another way which is across the top here and round through this cavern and down these steps and there's not actually anything to stop him from doing that so this module kind of assumes that Nesnar has arrived about 30 seconds before the players and hasn't really explored the whole lot yet um, and is moving at incredibly slow pace. And it, it just doesn't make any sense. Um, so I do have some serious issues with this and we will make some changes to it. One of the changes we need to make is this chamber needs to be different. Um, I mean, it can stay with fungus, and it can be fungus-oriented, but there has to be something here that will actually stop Nesnar, and therefore, more than likely, will stop the players as well. We want the players coming in and going, hang on a minute, do we really want to risk this? So we need to do something with that. More than happy for you to drop your comments below of what you think we could do. We could put a more powerful monster in here, Shambling Mound, something like that. We could put something much more aggressive in here. We could put some kind of puzzle that, for whatever reason, Nesnar hasn't been able to solve. Um, we could do something like that. Um, this Flaming Skull issue, we, when we get to that, again, I'm going to ask you the same question, is what can we do? Now, this might be slightly easier because we might actually just put a door here and have some kind of puzzle that needs to be solved before they can gain access to it. That's kind of what I'm in favour of, but I'm more than happy to listen to your suggestions. Um, and this top route around here as well. Um, we're going to have to do something to make this more challenging. Now again, more than happy to accept your suggestions. And as we get to these other parts, we will again say, right, what do we want to do about this? And it might be we put something in the water, you know, the lurker, the lurker in the in the water, the watcher in the water. Some kind of monster that is waterborne that will attack anybody trying to get past that, that is significant. And then it gives our players options of you know, been out trying to sneak past the creature, it might only attack occasionally, all sorts of other things that potentially could make this route really, really dangerous and therefore genuinely give Nesnar pause. Now, with the Flaming Skull, we could use the excuse that Nesnar's forces, his, his goblins, his bugbears and things, will not go past it, it's too dangerous, it's too scary. We absolutely could use that as a reasoning. Um, but I'm not sure. So three areas we definitely need to bulk out that we can do with puzzles, um, additional monsters, change monsters out and things. So have a little think about that. Drop anything in the comments. We're not going to finish this whole thing in this video. Um, so we're going to carry on and do the rooms for this uh, and come back and make alterations. But this this definitely needs to change. That's just... It's, it's limp, I think, is the, is the word I would use. Which <laughs> use, uh, I might even go as far as to say flaccid. Uh, it's just yeah, it doesn't do it for me. As a player, I would be I would be seriously questioning and going, well, this Nesnar dude, he's really not an issue. If he can't even get past the two violet fungi with all of his troops and things like that, yeah, I'm not worried about him. Okay, so let's carry on then with some of these whoops some of these other areas that we need to do new map location this is area 10 the dark pool uh, and uh, I've just done this is area 9 the dark pool thank you very much getting ahead of myself hang on a minute no I'm getting myself getting my knickers right in a twist here area 10 is indeed the dark pool we need to come back and do area 9 that I've missed I'm so, a bit, so frustrated by that ridiculous chamber. <laughs> okay, so let's again just paste this in here. This talks about the, the dark pool is the bit up the top, isn't it? Please tell me it's a bit up the top. Uh, oh, no, yeah, it's over this, it's this side over here. It's this pool over here. 
the numbering system's a bit weird in some of these modules. You just go all over the place. Um, so this is the dark pool. Let's drop that in. Okay. So a still pool fills much of this cavern. The water is dark, revealing a little of what might lie within. The shore of the pool consists of a thin layer of broken shells from strange pale mussels. A fishy odour hangs in the air. The pass a passage leads south from this area and a set of steps climbs to the east. Um, a sluggish stream flows from the cavern to the northeast. So it flows this way. All right. So then it flows, goes down into this ravine and flows out of the cavern there. Now, initially, that would have flowed along here. Uh, sorry. Initially, that would have flowed and formed um, a chamber here that powered the water wheel. Uh, that's what it's for. Um, and with the water wheel is powering all of the, the forge equipment here. Uh, and then it floods out back over to here. But uh, because of this cave floor collapse, the water doesn't do that anymore. All right, so it talks about small fish swim along the edge of the water, but the pool is also inhabited by a larger creature, a giant constrictor snake. Then we drop him in. I've now got giant constrictor. Oh, no, that was all right. Giant constrictor snake. If the characters pass through the area, the snake slithers from the water and attacks the creature at the back of the party. Yes. <laughs> yeah, well, that might be just me being mean. Um, I do like it when they attack the player at the back of the party um uh, you're huge you are you are you seriously huge i thought you were the do, 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 do. yeah it's huge i thought it was large nope they are huge okay more than happy to have that in there uh what cr is it cr2 yep brilliant enjoy uh, that's the kind of thing that i was thinking you know that makes a bit more sense to have over here um, blocking that other passage. Something that's actually quite formidable. Um, brilliant. Attacks the creature at the back of the party. So the pool itself. Uh, so the pool is 20 feet deep in the middle. The stream to the northeast is 3 foot deep and the ceiling of the passage is 2 to 3 feet above the water. The characters can easily wade through the stream to area W18. Um, that W18 is means they can wade through here to this area. Okay. Uh, so we need to bear in mind that characters can pass under this bit here. Um, now where we've got our walls in, of course, when they're coming across this top passage, it won't let them to walk through there. Um, this might be something that we can do using levels where actually this piece of floor here is on a different level to this piece of water here uh, and therefore you can walk from here to here so we would put another wall in this way and we would say hang on a minute some of these walls are you can pass under these walls going this way um, but you can't pass them if you're up here so that's one way we could absolutely do that uh, i'm probably not going to bother the chances are if they've come here They've investigated this. They're probably going to investigate these open corridors and see that anyway. The chances of them wanting to wade through there, I think, is fairly small, and I would just I would just hop them across. Okay, so I think that's a yeah. We can automate it, but is it really offering any bonus to us? No, I don't think so. All right, uh, so they can easily wade through that area. A character who explores the pool finds an old skeleton at the bottom, 10 feet from the shore and 10 feet underwater. The remains of a human wizard from Old Vandalin who died defending the mines against bandit attacks. Several arrows remain lodged in the skeleton's rib cage. So what we can do here then is we can take a... Let's close our beasts um, undead. We can take a skeleton and we can stick it in the pool here. Uh, now we're going to make him invisible all right but this talks about the fact that there's some treasure so let's just make that bold make it nice and clear that there is treasure uh, and it talks about the skeleton wears three jeweled gold rings worth 150 gold each and a wand of magic missiles uh, I've dragged it in in a moment. So um, what do I want to do with this? I am going to, first of all, under my items, I don't think I have a wand of, I've got a wand of magic missiles. Brilliant. So what I should be able to do, uh, da, 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 just to make it 
really clear. Wand of Magic Missiles, I'm going to drag that in here. All right, uh, in its bony fingers. So this dude here, I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to make him a container. So I'm going to enable him as a container. So you, sorry, you can hear me thinking. <laughs> I'm going to make him a container. All right, and under other settings, I'm going to make him a container rather than anything else. Uh, oh, or do I want to? I could make him. I could just make him a vault. A vault's fine. All they're going to be doing is taking. Or we could just make him an item pile. No, item pile's fine. They can just click on him and and take the stuff. That's fine. Let's make him an item pile. Um, da, 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 display single uh, item image. Uh, we don't need to worry about that. Main settings. We don't need any macros or anything. Uh, delete when empty. The answer is no for this because I want to keep the uh, thing. So it's automatically because a skeleton has short bows uh, and short sword. It's automatically converted his equipment into stuff. So we're going to take those off. But first of all, I want to find uh, loot and treasure under jewelry. What what was it? It was three jeweled gold rings um weirdly enough i haven't got any gold rings so i'm going to easily just duplicate open this up i'm going to call this gold ring <laughs> <I'll rig now. laughs> 150 gold each they reckon for these ones i'm aware that some of these things gold necklace gold rings and stuff i really need to find some images for um I'm just having a quick look in my other window if they're really really easy to just to pull a image do you know what i'm gonna do it i'm doing it i'm doing it i'm doing it in the other window so you can't see as well hang on i know it's exciting isn't it <laughs> let's go find that image <laughs> such a muppet so in items here uh choose a file uh not in there if i now go to items Obviously, I just nicked this one from the internet. Um, but there we go. Gold ring. There we go. At least we've got something in there now. 150 gold. Uh, we're going to say that it's uh, uncommon. It's fine. Details. Let's just make sure. Uh, it's not an art object. We just put it down as treasure. Again, doesn't really matter, to be honest. Uh, so now we've got that gold ring, wherever it is. We can drag that in. We can change that to three. And I can also get rid of those other two items, update the item pile. There we go. And then under our chain, close our jewelry, close our loot items, um, go back to our weapons. Yes, I know it's making you twitch. I've got weapons, includes things like wands. I will <laughs> sort that out. <laughs> Come on, I did tidy up, I just didn't tidy up that much. Okay, right. So skeleton wears three uh jeweled gold rings i've just called them gold rings um probably ought to update that but i can't be bothered uh and clutches a wand of magic missile so there we go we've got item pile uh, and i'm going to leave that skeleton hidden hidden so a character who explores the pool finds an old skeleton lying at the bottom let's move him out a bit further just to make that extra it says 10 feet from the shore so yeah i'm going to do that 10 feet from the shore they would have to actually get in that water potentially with that snake in order to find it okay good uh, are we happy with that um let's read the description again the water is dark revealing what may lay within consists of a thin layer of broken shelves odor passage leads blah 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 blah, blah. so really there's no lighting in here at all and the reason why i was doing that is because over here we talked about the fungus lighting and then i didn't put any in <laughs> it's good lights i'm going to copy this one because it's similar type of fungus i've just tra trashed a whole bunch of stuff on my desk um and we can put some of this stuff oh where did i paste that uh, we can put some of these oh i didn't want to do that one did i copy paste thank you very much i'm going to stick some of these glowing around here a bit Now, under there, we did have a, a different, more intense one. So I'm going to stick that more intense one somewhere as well. Uh, just, just to mix it up, really. OK, 
Okay, so this whole cavern is pretty kind of glowy. All right, put that one back over there where it should be. Take off that. Uh, and I think that's all right. Now, I, where's Haley? Come on, Haley, get out of here. I'm just going to transport you across here. How does this room look? Bearing in mind that Haley has no light source. Whoops. From darkness, and she can move into this room. She has, of course, got the uh, we got the torch thing on, so she can turn her torch on, and she can see that. But if she's all the way back the passage this way, so in theory can't see very much, she will be able to see this glow from up ahead. Oh, there's a glowing light up ahead, and I like that idea. Now, what I don't like is this weird shadow here. So I am going to whichever one that is. think it's I think it is that one I'm going to make that a, a bit bigger um, yeah I'm gonna make that a little bit bigger yeah so it's not quite so um, bizarre really okay so we've got a few more lights in there move Haley and just check the other lights yep got lots of glowing fungi and stuff and she can explore that without any light penalties. Uh, she can move down here where the light suddenly ends. And she can move off to north. Okay, good. Happy with that. Sorry, I do like to test these things. <laughs> okay, so we've got 7, 9, 10. What did I do? What did I move? Right, first of all, the fungi cavern. The fungi cavern is 8. It's not nine. That's where I went wrong. Get rid of that. Hello. Do, do, do. Oh, what? I, hmm. Isn't it a journal note? I can select. Yes, it is. Just I can't use fingers. All right. <laughs> now, the reason I got confused is because we are now missing number nine. And number nine is the great cavern. Okay, map location, there we go. Number nine, the Great Cavern. Uh, and that is this bit in the middle. It is indeed this bit in the middle here. So let's save that and... Thank you. Stick that out there. So we've got that. All right. Uh, and I need to rearrange. Thank you very much. Put these in the correct places. Okay, uh, Great Cavern then. This is... Uh, this place is pretty much just full of corpses, I think. Oops, hang on a second. There we go. Uh, and then we can drop the rest of this in as well. I'm a little bit fingers and thumbs today. Um, right, the skeletal remains are inanimate. Oh, wait, no, stop, stop with the description, you muppet. Uh, so steep escarpments divide this large cavern into three sections. So we've got this lower section here and the high ledges at either end, lower section in the middle. Carved stone stairs lead to the ledges. Two large tables stand in the middle section, along with a pair of old braziers. Not braziers. Um, a small table stands on the eastern ledge. A, the skeletal remains of dozens of dead warriors attest to the fierceness of of the fighting that took place all along. So this is similar to this place down here, which is just full of corpses, yeah? Um, and we just dumped a whole bunch of these down here. So in fact, actually, why don't we use that to grab and we can just start pasting corpses in all over the place. Now, the reason why I did copy and paste because it's really handy because they're already prone. Um, and we want them just laying about rather than anything else. Uh, stick as many as we want in. All right, so the skeletal remains are inanimate. However, five ghouls lurk in the shadows on the western ledge. So that's over here. So let's grab our ghouls. Grab you by the ghoulies. Okay. Two three four five now they're lurking so let's make them hide any character with a passive wisdom 
score of 12 or more uh, notices the ghouls. Now, here comes the challenge. Can I remember what the... Did I stick it on the GM screen? I don't think it worked very well at all. No, it didn't. But I did... <laughs> I did on the GM screen after complaining about being an idiot and can't remember these things. I did quickly shove it on the GM screen just for quick reference. I know it's a bit small. Um, so which one do we want? This fourth one down, check perception 13 passive is what I want here. So any character with A. Um, check perception... Uh, 12 passive or more yeah okay any character with checks uh, notices the ghoul if the ghouls notice any light or noise anywhere within the cave and quickly bound to attack they are hungry and fight until destroyed let's get rid of that GM screen uh, this garment is a 10 for high and requires successful um, athletics check to climb. So let's just pop that in. Again, it's unlikely, so we want skill. Uh, ability is strength, um, and the skill is athletics. Did I spell that correctly? DC 12. Uh, check to climb. A creature that falls or is knocked from the top of the ledge takes d6 points of damage um, and lands prone yeah so it's the falls or gets knocked that's where your shove comes into place shoving creatures off of cliffs is fabulous i mean it's only 10 foot you're probably better off hitting them with your weapon for for the damage it will do but uh if in doubt shove them <laughs> okie dokie so there we go we've got our passive perception here so just looking in the copy there we can just hover over it it's giving us who passes that passive 12 perception uh, and if necessary we've got a athletics check so these little ghouls i don't want all of you at once let's um they, they are lurking around up here uh, and i've put them in this top bit because it's more shadowy it's where they're more likely to successfully lurk um all the rest of these skeletons are dead and will stay dead fine that's it. That's the Great Cavern. Uh, we did the Dark Pool, of course. Uh, we now want the... Uh, just checking, because I'm not sure where all of these things actually are. This one here. Uh, this is the North Quarters. So let's put in the North Quarters. Urgh. Map location, of course. Make sure we get the uh, the right map location this time first time <laughs> it's always the first time i'll get it right first time <laughs> there we go all right now what's exciting about the north quarters yeah probably not very much um this whole place is a little bit limp i mean it's okay it, it it's a good adventure i really like fandelver and below as a starting adventure first introduction for um for players into dnd but also for, for DMs, I think it's good. It's got a, a balance of stuff. For my personal tastes, um, the story is good, but the, the, there's too many plot holes in it. Like we talked about Nesnar. Nesnar drives me nuts from the fact that he's so weak as a, as a character, as an adversary. Uh, he just doesn't carry any kind of gravitas. Um, I forgot what I was saying. I was too busy reading something else. Uh, right, paste that in. Da, 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 da. Uh, but yeah, for for DMs and for players, it's a really, really good adventure. It just it needs some help to to build it up. There's not enough puzzles in it. There's not enough problem solving. It's very kind of ah yes, just listen. The NPC will tell you what to do next, and away you go um, and hack up anything that gets in the way. All right, uh, shut up. Stop going on. So the eastern door, which is this one. Uh, is so let's open up our walls is barricaded from the inside and requires a dc 20 strength athletics so we do not have closed locked okay so that's locked they're not going to come in from the right into this chamber that's fine 
um, but we can of course unlock that if we make a uh, a skill check using strength and the skill is athletics dc uh, dc 20 uh, to force to force open uh, a character who listens uh, at either door and succeeds in a okay well let's do this um, it's a skill check using the ability of wisdom and the skill we want is perception and it's a dc 10 Uh, check. Yeah, happy to have that. Here's gruff voices speaking goblin and talking about how hungry they are. So the old stone bunks line the walls of these quarters, uh, which are lit and heated by a glowing iron brazier in the middle of the room. Okay, let's chuck some light in. Okay, let's stick that in. Now it's a glowing brazier. It's not like a rich fire, um, but we certainly want to do some stuff here uh what color do we want it well we kind of want it an orangey uh, i don't know an orangey kind of glow that will do that's all right isn't it uh, it might be slightly intense let's make the bright only five um and then we can make dim 30. it's probably a bit extreme isn't it let's make it 20. that'll be fine um, what about if we make that 10 bright? Turn the color intensity down slightly. Light animation, I think we need. Um, what about pulse? So I'm silent because I'm watching the light. <laughs> I'm going to put that intensity slightly back up again. I, I like that. I think that for glowing coals, it's got a little bit of movement. It's providing a bit of light. It's not too extreme. I'm going to go with that. All right. Uh, da, 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 da. Where did we get? Six bugbears, including one who is larger than the others, lounge in the room, grumbling about their hunger. So give me, give me, give me bugbears. Right. And, and so again, sometimes it's just quicker to go copy, uh, paste, paste. No, I don't want ghouls. <laughs> don't want ghouls. What? Hello? Doesn't want me to. Why can't I copy a bugbear? Oh, how strange. It's not letting me copy that bugbear. How many did it say? Six of them. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, six. Okay, so six bugbears reside in this chamber. They are loyal minions of Neznar. Let's chuck bugbear down there for no other reason than we can. Loyal minions of Neznar. This room marks the front line in the spider's assault on Wave Echo Cave. See what I mean? It's the front line, is it? Because they can't deal with this bit of fungus and one screaming skull and they haven't managed to find their way around here yet um and the bugbears are here to prevent ghouls zombies and other undead from troubling their leader who is in area 19 it's up here somewhere um like area w6 which is the south quarters uh which was here which had ghouls in it um like that, it was formerly a barrack for miners. The bugbears removed the corpses they found here and built the barricade. All right, treasure-wise. Let's put a little line in, just make it a bit clearer. Uh, the largest bugbear carries a pouch of 15 copper, 13 electrum, two agates worth 10 each, and a potion of healing. Um, okay, so... Didn't mean to accidentally open and close that door or lock and unlock that door. All right, so which one of these are we going to make the leader? Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to delete you and I'm going to make, I'm going to use Clark. It's just a different bugbear token, that's all. Um, bug bear 
Let's just call him a bugbear boss. Right? Let's just make him a little bit bigger than everybody else. Okay. Um, now what's he got? Let's give him some stuff. Uh, right. Where? Where? where but, 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 but. Oh, I. I <laughs> it's so infrequent that I use this older character sheet now. Uh, where's money? <laughs> not under effects. Not under spell books. Uh, under features, uh, and it shouldn't be under attributes. Um, I mean, this equipment here, that's a tax, actions, features, inventory, add. I don't want to add like that, do I? How bizarre. Why do I not know how to do this? This is suddenly horrendously embarrassing. Isn't it? <laughs> Are we not allowed to give gold to monsters? Help me, somebody. Tell me. Oh, you're somebody, at least one of you, is absolutely laughing their legs off right now, going, like, how do you not know how to do that? It's just never occurred to me before. Uh, it makes no sense. It's any any of those. Da, 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 da. Size medium, all of that. Yep, special traits. Nothing about. Am I insane? Right. Anyway, he has two a gates. <laughs> that, that I can do. <laughs> uh, gems and stones, two a gates. Um, so we can slap both of those in there. Uh, what I can do, of course, is if I can configure, I can say that he is enabled. Um, uh, as a item pile okay and if he's an item pile I can add currency on <laughs> shush you lot um, 15 uh, 13 electrum we can put those on lovely uh, we can update that good now if I open him again um, if I configure and turn that off and update him Brings it back as a normal character sheet, right? Great. Where's his money then? He hasn't got any. So if they kill him and I go, oh, okay, right, he's now one of those, the money's still there. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so interesting, isn't it? We want him. We want him to be lootable. Um, so we want him to be a item pile, but obviously not while he's still alive. Um, so this is one thing we can do: is disable the item pile. We can have all the settings and everything. Um, he's currently a monster that they can fight. Uh, when they kill him, we can just literally go into configure and say yes, he's now an enabled item pile, and they can loot him. Uh, a little bit manual, but absolutely we could do that. Um, it is very, very possible that you can write a macro that says, oh, hits zero hit points while it goes, oh, yeah, it automatically marks him a dead. Also, change that setting. I don't know how to do it. I'm not going to spend ages trying to work out for the sake of literally that and that. Um, yeah, don't need to. It's all good. All right. Uh, oh, potion of healing. <laughs> Give him his potion of healing. After all of that, close jewelry, get rid of all of that. Um, Get rid of all the loot. Potions. There we go. Potion of healing. We're going to give him a potion of healing. That's in there as well. So they'll be able to loot that. All right. Are we happy now? Okay, good. Um, so nothing really happens in here apart from the fact it is a barricaded room. So that's not actually that exciting. All right. So what's the next one we want to do? We're up to number 12. Where is number 12? Uh, that is uh, literally next door here. So this is going to be the last one we're going to do for now. Um, and then we will finish off the others in the next video. So this is the uh, smelter cavern. The map location, chuck that in. So smelter cavern, number 12. Let's chuck that out over here. Lovely jubbly. Um, and uh, what have we got? So we've got, we got a reasonable description for this room which makes a nice change, because some of them are really basic. And we've got a fair bit of a description. All right, so description-wise, uh, a blast furnace and a mechanical bellows. You can, so you can see these here. Um, powered by a water wheel here, 
which is dry at the moment. The furnace is cold and dark, but heaps of coal are piled nearby, along with carts full of unrefined ore. Uh, the water wheel sits in a 10 foot wide channel cut into the floor of the room, but the channel is dry. If you remember, we talked about the fact that, that this stream was supposed to flow around here. Now, it talks about how gentle this stream is. That's never going to power that water wheel, but there we go. <laughs> Need sluice gates and all sorts of things in there to make that functional. Uh, anyway, get distracted. <laughs> um, the water wheel sits, uh, da, 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 but the channel is dry. Passage is ex yes, exactly. We don't need to worry about that because we can see them. More than a dozen withered corpses lie scattered in the room, individuals still wearing remnants of armour. Uh, floating above them is a skull engulfed in green flame. So, again, we want to stick some corpses out here. Um, so, back to our... Did we, did we use... We used skeletons for all of it, didn't we? Because they are ancient. Um, those are zombies that are actually active. Yep, so we're going to chuck some more skeletons in here. Because um, we want to do exactly the same thing. We want our players slightly paranoid. They're going to be seeing all of these bodies. When it comes to undead, they don't know which... It's doing it again. Yeah, it. I've done something. I've pressed something or other, and it won't let me copy anymore. How strange. I mean, it's not the end of the world. I can just copy another one out. Because <laughs> all I did was set this to... Uh, set it to prone. There we go. Um, and they're not going to be compatible. So can I copy this one? Oh, I can copy and paste that one. It wouldn't let me do these other ones. How strange. But anyway. Um, so there's a bunch of them, is there? Let's uh, slap these guys around all over the place. Um, we can put one down there as well. Uh, da, 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 da. Ooh. Ooh. Don't know what I did there. More than a dozen withered corpses. Lie scattered around the room. I'd accidentally replaced some of that stuff up there. That's a bit weird. Okay, and then floating above them is this skull um, engulfed in green flame. So if you don't know what that is, that's a flame skull. Um, do we have it? So SRD into our monsters, bring up our monster thing. Have we got a... Of course we don't have a flame skull. That would be just too easy. Okay. So we need to create a flame skull. Uh, so just in the other page, I've got stat blocks and everything else. That's easy. Just want to double check that I hadn't created it previously. I shouldn't have done. Um, nope, I haven't. So we're going to create a new monster for this bit. And that's what's going to bring us to the end of this video. Right, so uh, let's close these bits while we do this, just to keep our screen a bit tidier for you guys who are trying to watch this. Um, and we're going to go to, we're in our characters, we can go to import stat block down the bottom here. Okay, now if you've not seen this before, there was a video where we looked at this about being able to port, import these things in. Um, in my other window, I literally have the module here um, with the uh, stat block in it. Uh, so I am going to copy and paste that stat block directly into here. Uh, I'm not going to bother importing it to a folder. I could. Well, actually, I can actually, can't I? I can just go straight to Undead, please. Uh, I'm going to click Import. And then we're going to hold on to our pants <laughs> and hope that this has come through correctly. So this should be a tiny undead neutral evil. Don't worry about it that um it should be an armor class of 13 40 hit points um with a fly speed of 40 yep so we've got 40 hover which is good it can do that um we've got stats of 1 17 14 16 10 and 11 that's all good we should have skills in arcana and perception that's good we should have damage resistances, uh, damage resistances, lightning, necrotic, and piercing. Good, we've got that. 
Uh, damage immunities, cold fire and poison, cold fire and poison. Um, condition immunities, we should be immune to charmed, frightened, paralyzed, poisoned and prone, which is good. We should have 60 foot dark vision uh, and a passive perception. Uh, but, but yeah, don't need to worry about that. Um, all right, we should have some features. We should have a thing called illumination. That's already in here. Um, flame skull sheds light. So a dim light in a 15 foot radius or a bright light in a 15 foot radius and a dim light for an additional 15 feet. It can switch between the two. Right, so we need to do that in a moment. We've also got magic resistance. We've got that built in. Rejuvenation. So if it's destroyed, it regains all its hit points in one hour unless holy water is sprinkled on the remains. Uh, now, in fairness, that's the kind of thing Nesnar's probably not going to come prepared with, holy water. <laughs> so you could argue that the flame skull is a reasonable blockade in this section if you wanted to. Uh, and of course, it's got scale, well, uh, spell casting abilities. So in its spell book, we should have... Uh, Magic Missile and Shield, yes, uh, Blur, Flaming Spear, Sphere, uh, and Fireball. So it is a bit of a, yeah. <laughs> now, um, it says it's a fifth level caster. It's using its intelligence. Uh, it requires no somatic or material components. It has the following spells prepared. Okay, so it can only do Fireball once. Okay, so it's not innate spell casting where it can just keep going and going and going. All right, so we've got everything we need. Um, we can, I need to find an image for it, don't I? There is one uh, in, the, in the module. Uh, so bear with me one second. I'm just going to, I was sure I had one at one point. Uh, I'm just going to, do that we're going to modify this upload an image into our npcs and we're going to drink that one there get rid of that background um, bring that over whoops bring that over apply let's see what that looks like when i drop it on uh, undead flame skull and it is small, or tiny rather, which is absolutely fine. Uh, yeah, we can just drop it in the middle here, anywhere we like. I think, I think just, just there. I'm going to, whip, sorry, making making decisions on the fly. I'm going to move that out the way so it's less likely to be in a combat situation. Now, what we do need to do is we've got that light, haven't we? It was 15 foot dim, 15 foot bright with its biggest one. Um, so I'm on the wrong thing. Double right click to so bring this up. We can go to light. We can say light radius. We've got 15 foot bright and we're going to have 30 foot dim. So its total is going to be that. Uh, and we could decide to make that, um, you know, like this green. Like We've already got green here, haven't we? Um, we could decide to make it, you know, kind of a fiery. It doesn't have to be a white light. Ugh, that's a bit intense. I don't think I should have done that. <laughs> Let's just make it white. Okay, but not that kind of intensity. Dear Lord. Let's just make it... How about that? Right, the best way to test it, of course, as always, is to grab somebody. I think about there was all right. What room are we in? There we go. Okay. So that is the area of light. That's still pretty intense. Ugh. Turn that intensity down to nothing. I don't want it on nothing. Perhaps I can make it. Slightly off colour. Yeah. Alright, let's stick with that. That's fine. 
again you know it's, it's different when haley has got her own light source going uh, uh, <laughs> i'm not happy i'm clearly not happy with it am i <laughs> i mean it's a flaming green skull so i was reluctant to use green but i really should use green because it's a flaming green skull i also need to put animation on it don't i it's a flaming flickering torch possibly but make it quite rapidly flickering um, let's put that right up animation intensity we can pop that up as well um, let's put that let's make see if we can make it a darker green might help I think that's better, isn't it? Um, I think that's better. Oh, Haley, where are you? Yeah, I th I th that is definitely better than what it was. Um, it's still not perfect. Uh, <laughs> why am I getting so hung up on this? Um, that's it. I'm leaving it. Okay, right, good. So, uh, what else did we need? I need to, I've stuck that in. Let's go back to our journal. Was there anything else we needed to do in here? So, um, each of the fallen dwarf warriors are zombies. They rise and shuffle towards any living creature. Oh, okay, so I've jumped, bumped a whole bunch of skeletons in here. What I need are zombies instead. Go to our monsters, go to our undead. Bring out our zombies. Bring out your zombies. So eight of the fallen dwarf warriors are zombies. They rise and shuffle towards any living creatures that enter the room, but they don't pursue creatures outside of this area for more than one round. So again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make these all prone. Um, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's stick them randomly around the place so again the players are going to come in they're going to see a whole bunch of corpses um, but they are not necessarily going to be suspicious that these are active undead um, but some of them are and some of them aren't um, but yeah anybody entering these zombies are then going to uh, I was going to say come to life <laughs> that's not the right word oh Oh, excuse me. Uh, all right. Um, da, 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 da. They won't see any creatures out of this area. In addition, far more intelligent undead creature guards this area. A flame skull. Um, did I finish actually doing the flame skull? I called it a flame skull. Yeah, I did. Good. Um, so I should be able to uh, 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 uh. highlight over there. A uh, yep, and then drag flame skull in. Although I missed off a couple of bells. All right. Uh, this creature was a servant of the dwarves, of the dwarves' human wizard allies, and it continues to act on ancient instructions to prevent any intruders from passing through this area. Uh, the impressive chamber was the heart of the Wave Echo Code mining operation. Here, the dwarves uh, melted ore, blah, 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 blah. The dry channel was where the dwarves diverted the stream from area w18 to power the water wheel here the water wheel operated the bellows which fed blah 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 blah. channel's bottom is five foot below the floor no ability is, is required to scramble in or out of it but it would definitely be um rough terrain so it's going to slow them down um character in the channel can follow this etc etc like the fungi cavern in area w8 this chamber poses a serious obstacle to prevent the spider from reaching his objective the forge of spells in area w15 uh, nesnar is still formulating a plan of how to get past the undead just trash them dude um so that's this area so can you see what i mean so this this area you could argue yeah there's quite a lot of undead here um you could argue that the bugbears refuse to fight them um you could argue that you know it is basically nesnar against all of this lot the flame skull yes they've destroyed it but it keeps coming back um you could you could have those arguments that that is um acceptable two violet fungi it's just <laughs> You know, uh, yeah, 
two violet fungi that's it um, <laughs> it's pathetic okay all right so we've done quite a few here um we have only a couple a uh, few more to do so we've got the uh the starry cavern the wizard's quarter the forger spells the booming cavern the old stream bed collapse cavern the temple of doom doomathion 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 sorry um and the priest's quarters to do so i suspect this is going to be two more videos to get those done um as i said before um please do let me know what you think about this area being a complete showstopper for um for, ne for nesnar and whether you think that's appropriate and if i'm if you guys think that that's absolutely fine great i'm happy to go with that um but what about this area? What should we do about this fungus room? Do you think we ought to replace it with some kind of puzzle? In which case, have you got any ideas? Should we stick more powerful plant creatures in here with them? You know, we have got things like shambling mounds we could put in um, and add in there if we wanted to. We could even stick a carrion crawler in there or something. Um, make it a bit more worthwhile and of course we will then also have that same discussion when we get to doing these bits so next video we'll carry on um, I suspect two more videos and this whole area will be done and then we will move on to look at the integration of um, Ice Spire Peak and the quest um, threads and how they weave into this first part thank you very much for a little bit yeah getting tired thank you for watching guys you take care bye bye